I know what you're thinking. Did he purchase six sabers? Or did he only purchase five? Well, to be perfectly honest, in all this excitement, I kind of lost track myself. So I guess all there is to do is ask yourself a question. Do you feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Yep, that's the end of the uh, the video. <laughs> Again, I've got my kitty. Friend of mine, he calls him Darth Kitty, but his name is Inky. So he is officially Darth Inky. There, I said it. That's that that just happened. Ah, I have before you. Uh, this is a uh, Ultra Sabers Azure Mantis. And I bought this saber used off of eBay. And um, I will preface the video by saying that uh, the uh, the uh, speaker on, on this thing is, is knackered. It, it has issues. It works okay. Um, but it, it obviously has flaws and needs to be replaced. So I've been kind of procrastinating on uh, doing this video. Uh, thinking uh, foolishly that I'll, you know get that done before I, I do a video but um i figured i'd do the video tonight what the hell right uh anyway so this this uh saber came with all the uh the accessories and accoutrements that one uh, would want with the saber it came with uh a stand this is my first stand i've never had a stand before for my sabers i don't really have any place to put sabers on stands um i have limited space in my room and uh so it's full of stuff i collect a lot of things not just sabers but uh let's just say a lot of things i own a lot of stuff uh not quite a hoarder but um yeah yeah pretty pretty close to it uh anyway uh you're not here for that my psychological issues you're here for the saber so as i said uh the ezra mantis is on its stand uh came with this um um emitter piece with claws uh, I haven't put this on the saber yet, but it's here. Uh, and I think the purpose that I have it here is I'm trying to figure out. Ah, there it is. Blade retention screw. It won't focus. The, uh, blade retention screw is in a similar location on the, uh, the emit, uh, the emitter piece that's currently equipped on the saber so it only has one blade retention screw and um the blade sets um pretty deep into the hilt probably to about here uh with with all this being exposed these nice little cutouts um i'm not a big blade guy i have a few sabers that have blades on them but uh i'm such a klutz i was i was kind of envision injuring myself but um, anyway, it's a beautiful beast, and I'm glad I came with it. And one of these days, I'll be adventurous, and I'll, I'll install that. But it is not this day. This day, uh, we're just going to talk about uh, what you see before you. Now, this uh, this is um, a saber equipped with an emerald driver. And uh, it does come with all the requisite fonts. Uh, now, where to begin? Yeah, let's begin with the palm. So you got uh, vents. This sounds pretty good on this. I wish the speaker wasn't completely thrashed. Uh, it would sound a lot better. The speaker uh, is actually situated about there. So the noise has a bit of the sound, not noise, has a bit of a distance to travel. So it does get a little bit truncated. Got these wonderful little, um, little teeth on here. Little knobby teeth. Now, I don't know if there's like uh, an alternate pommel. For this saber but this is the one that came equipped with it and uh, so this uh, comes off right there for some reason th it's also uh, designed this this piece and this piece are separate and this is a little insert so that's why I'm kind of thinking that there might be some kind of alternate setup for that um, I'm, not, I'm not too sure you know what the situation is there but if you if you want to take the pommel off to get at the uh, the internals, you end up contending with the fact that you're going to end up removing this from that piece. Then you deal with this piece. It's, it's kind of a thing. Um, but uh, 
the one thing about the saber is there's a lot of a lot of sections where it comes apart. It's it's really quite interesting. The um the handle kind of has this uh, insert piece. Now I don't know if that comes out. Um, I didn't actually try to to remove it. I've had this thing all apart, and it would be kind of and it'd be kind of difficult because there's a lot of wires in here to contend with, you know, naturally. Um, but uh, okay, so yeah, cover tech wheel. Hurrah. And uh, the saber also uh, unscrews at this point, which is kind of kind of problematic. I've, I've found that you have to keep this really tight. Uh, otherwise, when you're swinging the saber, um, the, the, it could come loose. And by keeping this perfectly tight, it could just be a flaw with with my version or it could be like, you know, something that's that's overall a, an issue with all of the mantises, mantises is, uh, you'll notice that the, the cover tech wheel doesn't really line up nicely with uh, the side of the, the saber because of that. So that's kind of a, a strange issue. Um, there is a, a neat little finish on uh, on the, the part where the bend is. This is this is very nice. It's a little bit textured and uh, there's a backlit switch. Uh, where the uh, emitter inserts naturally, the um, it, it's really strange because there's a where the LED is is located in here. Naturally, when you when you insert the blade, the blade kind of holds the LED in place because, as with you know a lot of Ultra Sabers, um, hilts the the LED uh, section isn't held in by anything. There's no LED retention screw. If there's one thing that I wish Ultra Sabers would sort of address, that's the one thing. Um, I, I can deal with all the other uh, you know issues that the uh, the Saber has, but that's that's the one thing I, I kind of wish that they would learn to to deal with. Um, anyway. So this section detaches from this section. Everything just unscrews, and this unit uh, can be removed. Uh, I've I've seen videos where people complain about the um, the sharpness of this, and it is very sharp. The way I have it located with this arrow kind of lined up with the switch, um, I find um, kind of puts it in a position where your hand kind of ends up if if it touches anything it's usually these sides where it's not too sharp i mean the the, the little um chevrons do kind of continue to, off the sides so that's something to be cognizant of cognizant of but you don't really handle the saber much beyond this point your hand usually will rest about there so it's it's not too that's not too unsafe and then of course you get your emitter with these uh, little cutouts which simul simulate uh, windows. So let's take it off the stand so I can kind of really show you things. It just it because it's a curved emitter, it doesn't really rest easily. Um, I've had this out, and uh, I think I had it involved in, in videos previously, but that's a difficult thing to to deal with. So I, actually, I think I'm just going to do the visual tour now, just to get it over and done with. <laughs> So they do have a lot of these, uh, you know, electroplated uh, parts, which uh, really adds to the aesthetic appeal of this saber. It is not easy to turn this in your hand without it like kind of jiggling about. So I do apologize for that. I'm actually gonna do this. It's a little bit easier for me. I don't have a blade in here yet. I got to put the camera down to get the blade in here. That blade has been in another uh, Ultra Saber that I've been playing around with. One of my stunt sabers. My Liberator, actually. So, there we go. Now, this will, give you the, this will afford you the opportunity to see how far this blade goes in. And uh, if I can get the coordination down. This is not working. Boy, that's dumb. I'm just, I'm just bad at this. Really, really bad. This is just seriously bad. Okay. So, let's get that inserted. Mm-hmm. 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 There's actually little holes here where you can actually see the, the blade in there. Because, you know, they have windows uh, for that, too. And I like to get the blade as tight as, as humanly possible. In there, the sword's gonna get tricky. Let's see if I can do this. Not quite sure how. 
<laughs> I have to put this down for a second. Bear with me. Here, I'm back. Bump. Yeah, anyway, so uh, there's uh, that's the location of the blade retention screw. And I've got my blade inserted in here. Now, let's turn this bad Larry on. Now, I haven't actually uh, done anything with the Emerald Driver on this uh, Sabre yet. And it, the previous owner didn't do anything with the Emerald Driver. Now, uh, just to sort of elaborate what the Emerald Driver does is it... Uh, allows the uh, the saber to kind of utilize uh, an RGB effect to uh, change the blade color. Um, for a couple different effects, you can have it transition from one color to another. With essentially, what you do is you it has a set kind of starting point, and you adjust the color in you know in the, the it, it, there's an app. I wouldn't even really, it's an application on your, that you install on your computer. And when you connect the, uh, the, when you uh, remove the, the, uh, the chassis, there's, there's two drivers in there. There's one for fonts and then there's one for the Emerald driver. So you connect it to the Emerald driver and I think it allows you to basically adjust everything. And it'll immediately kind of show you, you know, where the colors are set. And there's four slots. So you can adjust the second and the fourth slot. I think it's the second and the fourth slot. And basically, the driver kind of fills in the rest with the transitions. So you just kind of do, you adjust a slider, um, which has RGB values and, uh, you can kind of customize it to whatever color you want, have a transition from one to another. Now, currently this is just set to a single color, uh, which is an Arctic blue. And that's my favorite color anyway. So I'm just going to leave it at that. But what you can do is you can actually adjust the timing of it so it'll transition from one color to another and you can see the transitions or you can kind of decrease the time of the transitions um, through milliseconds and it'll kind of look like a bit of a flicker effect. So that's actually quite nice. Uh, and then you can adjust the flash on clash color. Um, they, they kind of work in concert and affect one another um, as, as far as I know. And um, currently... As I said, this one is set to, and you can kind of hear the speakers sort of, sort of thrashed, but I've got my Arctic blue, and of course you've got your flash on flash. That's really loud. Sorry about that. No main. All right, let's try this. Now you can see that with the with the clash there's a a lot of transitions with the color a lot more than just uh you know having it clash silver or whatever color is installed so that's kind of an affectation of the emerald driver again i haven't adjusted any of that but and you can see it more clearly with the lockup and of course there's your backlit uh switch and when you're wielding don't worry I am not going to attack you I would never attack my kitty when you're wielding one of these you're kind of like focusing on handling it at this uh, at this uh, curved point and it does take a bit of getting used to but That's another thing the Emerald Driver gives you is a stab, which is really nice. Yeah. And of course, you have your, uh, move there, your different fonts.
So the standard fonts that come equipped on this thing. So that works okay. I love that font. It's so deliciously weird. So this is a wonderful piece. I really, really do wish that the, the speaker was, um, you know, in better condition. But, you know, I, I can go to the Ultra Sabres website and uh, purchase a new one. Uh, it will involve a bit of soldering. Um, so I have no practical experience um, fiddling with that. Uh, so so that's going to be a learning experience. Now, you know, probably y'all are wondering why I don't really do installs. Um, part of the reason is I, I'm not much of a cook. I don't particularly like cooking. I'm the kind of person that I prefer to uh, go to a restaurant and pay pay people that are far better at it than me uh, to prepare the meal. To me, uh, it's worth spending the money, and I, I sort of feel the same way with Sabres. Um, my job basically entails production. And when I'm at work, I'm constantly uh, kind of thinking and troubleshooting and working out the process to, to complete my job. And it sort of involves producing, 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 producing. I'm a digital printer. So you know, when I get out of work, the last thing I really want to do most of the time is uh, deal with the nuance of uh, producing more things. So uh, I guess that's like a psychological issue on my part. But um, it kind of carries over to uh, to my life. And uh, I would rather uh, pay someone to, to, uh, to do an install. But at the same time, uh, I do enjoy getting in and rooting around and figuring out how uh, – how how the sabers work from from a programming and electronic standpoint that's that's kind of easy for me um the issue that i have currently is the fact that my my laptop uh, it's it's an older laptop it's a it, it, it runs windows 7 and uh i like windows 7 because i know how to get in there and fix things but it's an older it's an older obviously it's an older um <laughs> operating system is really old um but it works so um, I haven't upgraded that, and that doesn't allow me to access the, uh, you know, access the uh, the soundboards to a, a lot of the sabers that I have. Uh, some things work, other things don't. So I'm limited in that regard. Uh, anyway, so you know that's a little bit about me. Um, <clears throat> what more to say about this saber? Uh, not too much. Other than the fact that I will get the speaker uh, replaced, and then, um, and then I think I'll be very, very pleased with this uh, saber. Uh, I, <laughs> I like I said, Ultra Sabers I usually purchase on uh, eBay, and I apologize, to Ultra Sabers, for that. But I don't make enough money to really buy these things new, and uh, it is what it is. All right, so I guess that pretty much wraps up the video uh, for my Azure Mantis, my Ultra Sabers Azure Mantis. Um, yeah, I have uh, received a few comments. Uh, you know, people have a preference for uh, for straight hilt sabers. I um I used to feel that way, and then uh and then I acquired a, a saber forge vanquish. And after playing with that and learning the, the, the nuance of, of dealing with a curved hilt, uh, I've, I'm, I've kind of become a bit uh, addicted to them. Um, but they're hard to come by. 
and uh, I, I definitely would like to purchase more, but they're usually sold out wherever you go. My my next ideal saber that I would like to get would be a, a Genesis Custom Sabers Bad Axe. I don't know if anybody has ever uh, anybody has ever seen that particular saber, but uh, if you're so inclined as to uh, go to Genesis Custom Sabers uh, website, uh, he works exclusively with CFX, and he does uh, full RGB LED setups as well as as well as uh, NeoPixel, and the uh, Bad Axe is probably one of the uh, most beautiful curved hilt sabers you can hope to get and uh he also has a, a saber uh, that he's working on called the bane they're currently sold out otherwise i probably would have ordered one already uh not to be in stock until next year he's, he's just a, a lone lone wolf <laughs> and uh yeah so that's my shout out to genesis custom sabers and hopefully i'll get my uh my vector soon at any rate uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, yeah, Happy New Year, everyone. That's coming up real soon. I'm going to go out and pate on the town with my best friends, and it should be a wonderful time. And I'll leave you with that wonderful notion. <laughs> Alright, everyone, have a wonderful week, Happy New Year, and uh, I'll see you very, very shortly. Alrighty then. Oops, sorry. Bye.